Folks, welcome back. I'm Philip Magnus, and this is my brand new series of science fiction reviews. It is called, fittingly, Philip Reads the Hugos. Why is it so fitting a name? Simple enough, because I will be reading, and not just reading, but reviewing all the Hugo Award winning novels since all the way back in 1953 to whenever I'm done with this series, which is probably going to be 2053. Knowing myself, it's going to be very exciting to fail to finish all these wonderful science fictional novels. The first one we're starting off is, of course, The Demolished Man by Alfred Bester, which first among all books to ever be written won the Hugo. There were a few retroactive Hugos, but we'll leave those for a later date once I'm done with all the proper Hugos. Now, what do you need to know about The Demolished Man? It was written by Alfred Bester, who also wrote Tiger Tiger, a novel named after the William Blake poem about a man, a prisoner, who through, through this demand for vengeance becomes something much different from, from the vile criminal that at first he appeared to be. I read Tiger Tiger a very long time ago. We shall speak no more of it. Instead, we shall, together with me, go through my review, the one I've cooked up on my word processor of The Demolished Man. What does Philip from the past have to say about it? All science fiction, he writes. It can be endlessly entertaining in wholly and intentional ways. I owe linguistic dra drift alone for more than a few chuckles, as I explored the very first novel awarded to Hugo for best sci-fi all the way back in 1953. I mean, Philip, we already said all of that. Oh well. Despite certain antiquated notions, The Demolished Man made for exciting reading, and I can see why it still holds a place in the science fictional canon. Why, you... Why, you might ask? I, I tangled up my... That's not what I was going to say. What I was going to say is, when you read a novel so old, with so much familiar already, it can be easy to lose track of some of the once fresh elements introduced, this is one of the earliest sci-fi thrillers out there, reading almost as Philip Marlowe, if a slightly less deranged Philip K. Dick had written it. There's plenty of hardballed fun set in a gripping version of the 24th century, as our two protagonists go forth to war with one another. Ben Reich, a solar system-spanning business tycoon at the end of his rope, offers his greatest rival, Old Man de Courtney, a merger deal. When he is refused by de Courtney, Reich decides to solve the issue of his business rival in a less savoury way, saying at one point, If you won't let it be merger, then I'll make it murder. That's my American accent. It is as dreary as it sounds. Got to appreciate, however, a man willing to go all the difference, eh? But murder is not easy in the future, not when said future is filled with espers capable of reading your mind. Reich's task at the opening of the book is to navigate his way through a series of challenges in the accomplishment of this dastardly goal. While it's certainly an engaging start, the demolished man is at its best when the first-class esper, Lincoln, this honest ape, Powell, enters into the fray. At this point, about a quarter into the book, the two begin a contest of wills and wits that dominates the remnant of the book. Both spin circles over the other, outthinking each other in cleverly thought out ways. Bester's writing here absolutely shines. At the height of this novel, it is gripping, intelligent, witty, and a pleasure to read. The way Bester draws Powell and Reich as the antitheses of one another, the chemistry that the two share every time both are on the same page. This has to be one of the original science fictional frenemy relationships 
and I could not get enough of it. A recurring gag with Powell is the line, who stole the weather, which never fails to make him blush. Though we never get an exact explanation, it's certain that Dishonest Abe is to blame. This part of Powell's personality is a liar extraordinaire, jumping into high gear whenever the policeman seems to lose focus in a more informal setting or conversation, and the gusto with which he tells lie after lie, each one building like a stack of cards, a house of cards rather, it, it makes for for some really fun dialogue and and also um it makes for lies just outrageous enough to be believable you when you're met with with such lies as to think them totally totally impossible to make up that's the kind of lies i'm talking about here it's not all butterflies and rainbows alas the Demolished Man is a wholly Freudian affair in its conception of familial relationships and in its ultimate resolution alike, which I find not only outdated, but also kind of yucky. In addition to that, Besser allows himself to moralize the readers at the novel's very end. And humanist notions, though those moralizing notions are, they might even be soaked with admirable enough sentiment, and yet, to most of us, readers in the early 20th century... Did I say 20th century? I did, didn't I? It's the 21st century, Philip. Try to keep them... I've been around for a long, long while. At any point, for the readers in the 21st century, having a moralizing fin to your book, all wrapped up with a bow, it it diminishes the work somehow. And it is a surefire way to lose us, especially if it had been done earlier. But that is a small matter compared to the alas expected sexist portrayal of female characters. Not much in the way of representation of strong female characters indeed. Though I will say the book is better in the representation of minorities, at least. Women seem to only have two tree roles to choose from. They're either lovesick or the maliciously insane or, last but certainly not least, secretaries. It's at once to be anticipated with so many of these golden age or just after the golden age uh, sci-fi novelists. And at the same time, it is disappointing beyond measure because although so many of them, the authors I mean, had these visionary ideas of how society could develop and Bestus is indeed a very fine imaginary kind of um, use of, of his, his faculties to extrapolate the notions of what a late stage capitalist society with a technology much improved and now growing well outside the span of our own solar system would look like. Despite this magnificent capacity for extrapolation, they could only think of the way the future might be in a very limited framework, monochromatic and male-dominated. And that is, unfortunately, hard to stomach in the 21st century. Of course, we cannot have the same expectations of uh, literature from 70 years back to, to tick all the boxes, but that doesn't mean that we're not at least required to, to mention 
from from a place where we might think that we know better and i would say that we do at least <laughs> in in the importance of women's rights and and the role of women in society which should it must be underlined should be at the same level as any male i i know i said no moralizing but i think that's an important point to make who knows maybe it's not maybe of course it is um, there's no maybe here it's an important point to make my friends and that is the last i will say on it now i am absolutely happy to recommend to you the demolished man with that big caveat in mind if you think that you can enjoy the novel knowing its chief issue by all means you should pick it up i did but i also have to be conscious and i have to underline the issues that i see that said join me again next week when i will be talking about my first robert a heinlein book double star which i loved more than i did this and that is saying something is it is it saying something i think i dished this book quite a bit but i said it and so i'm stuck with it meanwhile i have but one more word for you and that is subscribe please i beg of you or if if you don't feel like subscribing you might as well click the like button if you dislike the video of course click the dislike button and let me know how i can do better in the comments below do you think you're going to read this one do you think you're going to be into the next few videos in which i will undoubtedly be dishing a lot of these 1950s novels because of their uh, outdated and sexist views you probably will enjoy it one way or the other and that sir is a threat See you next time. Bye! Now the demolished... The demolished? What? Now the demolished man...